Thanks to Michael Jarrett on live on Q104, number one for New Country, number one in Kansas City and your official birthday bash radio station. You know, when you see so many artists, and even when you like watch American Idol, one thing people generally get impressed with is someone's vocal range and how high they can get. This is the first time I've ever been impressed with somebody with how low. <laughs> So you know, one of the songs that you do where you, you start off, you get that really low voice, is Alyssa Lies, your first single, it was a top five hit. Uh, when you were doing your radio tour, and you stopped by and you did your uh, few songs first in the conference room, you were telling us the story, and everybody everybody knows the song Alyssa Lies, right? Uh, great song, powerful song. You were talking about a school teacher who actually used the song as a school project in Atlanta or somewhere in Georgia. Tell that story, it was pretty... Pretty powerful. We did a show with Robert Earl Keen. I was doing some acoustic dates before I got a record deal or anything, and uh, it was one of the biggest shows I'd ever had the chance to do. We had uh, about a month and a half with Robert Earl Keen going and doing theater dates, and I, and I would do acoustic openers in front of him, me and my friend David. And uh, I remember we were in Augusta, Georgia one night, and this lady came up to me. She said, Jason, I'm an elementary school teacher. I love the song you played, Alyssa Lies. Do you have that on CD? And I said, yes, ma'am, we have demos here that we were selling. I said, but you can have a copy. And she said, I want to take it to my class and have them listen to the song and then write a story, write, tell me what they think the song means to them. And I thought that was the coolest thing, you know, I mean, uh, here I was, a, I was an 82 acre farm is what I was raised on, so that's the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. So I was like, yes ma'am, go ahead, you know, and I didn't think anything about it, you know, I gave her a copy. Two months later, we got a phone call at my manager's office and uh, she said, Jason, I played it for my class. Out of my entire class, seven kids came forward and said they were in abusive situations at home. And out of those seven, they all got counseling and received help, but two of them were actually removed from their situations. And, 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 and it turns out that that teacher was actually, actually, thank you. That teacher was actually the first of many teachers now. I had a, I have had a few teachers who sent me emails or, or talked to me at shows and said that they've actually incorporated my song into part of their curriculum throughout the year so that they can make sure that that's not going on. So. That is such a powerful song. And you're actually a father. Yeah. Father of four. four. Story Page is my youngest daughter, and uh, I have a son younger than her, but her birthday was yesterday, and oh. she is five years old. Actually, all your kids have beautiful names. Tell oh. them all the names. Gavin Michael's seven. Uh, Savannah Nicole is six. Story Page just turned five yesterday, going on 35. And uh, JW is two. Awesome. And the song, I Can Sleep When I'm Dead, is kind of an inspiration for yeah. being a father, right? Yeah, you know, I, I remember hanging out with some writer friends of mine in Nashville and telling them how no matter where I was on a Saturday night, I always try to get back home on my one day as a divorced father to see my kids. It was the one day I had that I knew that I could see my, my babies. And, and he was like, tell me more about it. I said, well, 2 o'clock on a Saturday night, I pack up from a gig. I drive eight and a half hours back home to Raleigh, North Carolina. I get one hour sleep, and then I go pick up my babies for my day with them. And he said, man, when do you sleep? You're nuts. I said, man, I can sleep when I'm dead because all the tobacco farmers behind my house said that all the, my whole life growing up, so it got me just stuck. But That's awesome. Very good. Let's do another song. What do you got? Yeah. Yeah. You got yeah. something? Are you, you need a little time? No, no, no. We're right. Right. Yeah. Whatever you got. What do you got for us? <laughs> what is this? Baby, when I look at you, and you hear about him now, and I'm feeling blue. Standing there across the room, you're so lost in the way you move. It makes me reminisce back years ago, on a night like this, teary-eyed as you took my hand. I told you that I'd be your man. So many Living on a dream to shut it all down. 
City because you listen and you listen because of great songs like that from Jason Michael Carroll. Yeah. Dude, you are the headliner tonight. <laughs> you are a headliner. Birthday bash number 15. I don't think, have you, I don't think you played a birthday bash. Have you? I don't think I don't, so. I'm, I'm trying to remember. Maybe, did you yeah. ever do Yala? Yala no, I don't Yala? think so. Alright, well let me inform you. I know you played at the Beaumont Club a few times. I have. And you've seen, you've seen some decent crowds there. Yeah, we have. Nothing like you'll see tonight. Oh, really? Uh-huh. I'm guessing you could probably get 1,200 people in so there. So there's a potential for body surfing? Oh, yeah. I actually did that one. Did that one, yes. I did it the wrong way, but I did it. Yes, there there, there, there possibility of that. It's going to cool. be just jam-packed, hot. Um,